Hello there everyone, fellow YouTubers. This is Commodore Urban, or I guess you could say Engineer Urban, because I'm wearing my Lionel hat. In this video, I'm going to show you the 1956 Lionel Accessory Catalog. And if you remember my um, video of the 1547S freight set, I actually got the original accessory catalog, and I said I was going to do a separate video showing this catalog. And so this is the video right here. I'm going to finally do the video. Ow, crap. Here we go. Okay, on the front of the cover it says, Gee, Pop, you got them. Now how about the new Lionel accessories? And the reason why it looks like this because this thing is roached. I mean, this thing, I mean, the original owner of this, I guess, had taped this thing up. And I'm really kind of thankful they did because... If not, this thing probably would have fell to pieces years ago. So let's go ahead and open it up and let's see. Oh, wow, look at here. It would say here, because the corner's gone, it would say the new Lionel locomotives from 1956. And if I can zoom in in the bottom, you can see, I don't know if I can show it or not, but it says copyright 1956, the Lionel Corporation. So now, some of the new locomotives that came out in that year include the 2350 New Haven rect rectifier locomotive, the, um, the 2341 Jersey Central Trainmaster, the 601 Seaboard Switcher, the 621 Jersey Central Switcher, the, um, the 628 and the 629 uh, 44 tonners, the 2018 steamer, which was the 2018 LTS, which had the um, the 6026 T tender, just like the engine in my set, and the 2018 LTWS, which is the engine equipped with the whistle, and the uh, number 400 uh, Bud Diesel rail car. Other, there's another page here, and it says. Lionel Diesel and Steam Locos meet every passenger and freight hauling requirement. And here it shows the 2240 Wabash, the 2243 Santa Fe. These are made for 027. Because between these and the O gauge F3s, the only difference I've actually found that was that the O gauge F3s had two motors, the 027 F3s had one motor. Um, these are O these are O gauge because these are uh, got two motors in them. This is the 2378 Milwaukee Road, which is a very rare engine now, very very rare. And the 2360 Baltimore and Ohio, very another very rare engine too. And there's other road names here too, Illinois Central and Wabash. And if you find the Wabash one, the Wabash is very rare too. And they got the 1615 LT Steam Switcher, the 2016 Steam Loco, which I actually have one I showed in the video. Brand new price, 20. Original price, 27.50. And then you have the 736 LTS uh, 284, which is a Berkshire. And you have the 646 LTS, which this is a, a Hudson type steam locomotive. Which, if you was to find these engines on eBay or find them today, they're very, very expensive as hell. I've actually looked them up. Uh, here's my favorite page one of them. Five power packed Lionel Bruisers. The Pennsylvania GG1. Look how much it was. Forty nine ninety five. Fifty bucks today. It's like a two three hundred dollar engine or more. The popular GP sevens include the Milwaukee Road, which that's a very rare color scheme if you get first generation because the orange part. Because it wasn't black down the inside, so when the lights came on, the orange part glue up, and you know it, it would let light up. So they called it the jack o' lantern engine. But to that, and there's also the silver Burlington, and those are very quite rare. You have the 665 Hudson, the 2065 Hudson, and the 2356 Southern F3s. And these these exciting motor units will spark any layup. The 50 section gang car, the 60 trolley, the 41 army gas turbine, and now the Navy, number 51 Navy yard switcher. And for expanding railroad empire, Lionel Transma Trainmaster Transformers include the famous CW, the KW, 
the TW and the LW. Uh, new realistic Lionel freight cars to add to your set. And here I'll show you some. Here I'll just show the cars to you. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to name them all off. There's too many to name off. Well, maybe this one here. I actually would love to have one of these. This is a 6518 Transformer car. And this one, the 6346 Alcoa cement car. That's a very rare car. Very rare car. And um, the 3494-275 State of Maine operating box car. I love to have that one too. And the 62-62 wheel car. That's another really rare piece because most of the time the, the wheels are normally gone on that. Um, Lionel for authentic cars. There's a lot of cars here, as you can kind of see. A lot of 64 64 series box cars, including uh, the New Haven, two Baltimore and Ohio cars, an MKT, Great Northern, Central Georgia, and there's Minneapolis, St. Louis, New York Central, Southern Pacific, Rutland, and there's a refrigerator car. Crane car, I really love how one of the, an Evans auto loader. Uh, the machinery car, that's another one I'd like to have. And now, here we go. Lionel Super Streamline Passenger Cars. These are for the 027 line, but they can run on either O or 027 track. Include the Newark Pullman, the Elizabeth Pullman, the uh, Summit Observation Car, and the Clifton Vista Dome. And then you got O Stream O Gauge Streamliners with Congressional markings. These are for the Congressional Limited Pennsylvania Passenger Train. Oh, besides this car, that was a um, that's what they call this. Um, uh, what was the name of them? Uh, Speedliner car. And that was the Railway Express baggage car. And look at the prices: ten ninety five for a car. That's not how much they are now. There's like forty fifty bucks for a car now. The Betsy Ross Vista Dome. The Alexander Hamilton. The William Penn and the Molly Pitcher. If you find all these original cars, you're gonna pay over a thousand dollars. But back then they were like ten, twelve bucks a piece. So it just proves that prices then ain't not like prices today. Lionel's widest variety of action packed accessories. Man, look at all those accessories. Man, that would make any young any little boy drool in the fifties seeing all this cool stuff. Especially the operating accessories like the barrel loader, the floodlight tower, the gantry crane, the diesel fueling station, operating freight station, the automatic gate man, the 397 coal loader. Oh, I'd love to have one of these. Uh, the 445 switch tower, uh, the piggyback transport set, uh, the ice depot, you know, the, the operating signal bridge, lumber conveyor. The 130 water tower, the 494 rotary beacon, uh, the 497 operating coal station. This is cool. I've seen one of these before. I'd love to get one of these. I'm actually planning on trying to buy one. I would love to have one. And here's all the track, too. I mean, this is cool. For track, a piece of track back at 1956, a piece of straight track, or any kind of tra a piece of straight track or curved track cost you 25 cents. Or if you were buying. O gauge track, it was 30 cents. Now it's like five, seven bucks a piece nowadays, which is stupid. I mean, look at the prices on some of this stuff. Like a set of um, a set of barrels, wooden barrels, 50 cents. Nowadays it's gonna be like 10, 15 bucks to buy a set of wooden barrels. So I mean, it really, you can really tell that the difference of from 1956 to 2018 <laughs> of how much stuff goes for. Your railroad can grow and grow and grow, and it basically teaches you what you can do to expand your train empire, which I really like this. Play, and I like this because it, it gives you ideas of what you can do. Play all year round for small spaces. This is what they call the, um, the wall away layout. You know, you can fold up against a wall. This is called the fold away. It folds up and then the roll away, which you can roll underneath the bed, which I like that idea. Enjoy the fun of two train operation. This teaches you how you can set up your train layout or set up your track with fiber pins and wiring and stuff to run two trains at one time. See, here's how it works. 
a little bit complicated for me, but build your layout for the future. It gives you all these really pretty fucking awesome ideas. I actually might take a couple of these ideas and combine them into a track plan and build my layout when I get when I get everything I need. And finally, the back page of the catalog of this, of this magazine, which because you got the 465 sound dispatching station, that's really cool. The 342 operating culvert loader, which has another really neat piece. The 253 automatic block signal controller. The 257 operating station with diesel horn. They they made that for like the trains that didn't have horns and stuff, which is really cool. And finally, the 464 operating lumber mill, which honestly, of all the lumber mills I've seen, I've never seen one that had the lights on top of it, so I don't think they've ever been made. And see, it says Lionel's amazing new clay packed accessories, and that is the back of the uh, of this of this catalog. So yeah, I'm kind of I, I kind of don't want to mess with it anymore because I'm afraid it's gonna fall apart on me. So yeah. Uh, that 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 is the uh, 1956 Lionel accessory catalog. So uh, I I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed showing it to you. And if you have any questions or comments on anything, just put it down in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, would you? And if you like my channel, please hit subscribe. And until next time, this is Commodore Urban, I should say, Engineer Urban, saying full steam ahead and may the tracks be clear to you.